Hey, welcome to your lesson on solubility and solubility curves. Before we get started, just want to talk about what we're actually dealing with here. And what this is, is we're looking at how much solute can dissolve within solutions. A reminder that when I'm putting solute into a solvent and it dissolves into solution, it's basically distributing throughout that solvent, right? The solvent is breaking apart the solute and it's getting uniformly distributed throughout the solution. So that means that it's all over the place evenly and that the solute is now of molecular size. So solute particles are incredibly tiny and surrounded by solvent, typically water, so that you can no longer see it because it's such tiny size for all the solute particles. So that's what we're dealing with here when we're talking about solubility is how much solute can I dissolve in solution within the solvent, okay, before it kind of gets saturated or something like that. So we're gonna look at curves. We dealt with making curves uh, a little bit earlier with the lab, but now we're gonna take a look at actually looking at curves for solubility to interpret them and get data from them. So again, review, solubility is the ability of a substance to dissolve. It is the mass of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent to form a saturated solution at a given temperature. So that's what we're looking at today. That's what we're covering. So what we're going to look at is what's called a solubility curve. Now, the normal unit for solubility that we use in chemistry is grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solvent. Um, so typically water, but for 100 mils of sol solvent, how many grams of solute will actually dissolve in that? So it shows the saturated, saturation points of a chemical at different temperatures. So if I take a look at this graph, okay, and if I look at, for example, 20 degrees Celsius, at that temperature, uh, right around, let's say, 83 or so grams of that solute will dissolve, maybe 84. Uh, so if I take a look, here's 80, 90 would be just right in between here, right? Between 80 and 100. So I'm not quite halfway between the two. So I would say about 83 grams of solute would, will dissolve at 20 degrees Celsius per 100 mils of water. Now, as I actually get to a higher temperature, the solute becomes more and more soluble. So for example, if I look at 60 degrees Celsius, the solubility goes up because for solids, as I increase temperature, solubility typically increases. So for example, at 60 degrees Celsius, Celsius if I look right here, then that value would be a little bit over halfway. So let's say around 112 grams or so per 100 milliliters. Why don't you try out this one? How soluble do you think uh, the solute will be at 80 degrees Celsius? So what will the solubility of the solute be at 80 degrees Celsius? Try that out. And if I take a look here, right there, right, I've got about uh, just over halfway, there's 130. So let's say around 132 or so, 132 grams per 100 mils of solvent is what I have going on. So that would be how much solute I can dissolve at that temperature for the 100 mils of water. Now, let's talk about what happens if I add more. If I add more than 132 grams, let's say I add 140 grams at 80 degrees Celsius of whatever the solute is to water. Let's say it's sugar, okay? So I add, let's say, 140 grams of sugar to 100 mils of water at 80 degrees Celsius what would happen is not all the sugar would dissolve. I would have eight grams or so of sugar that would be left over at the bottom of my solution that simply would not dissolve. So my solution would be saturated and I can't get any more to dissolve at that point. Okay, 132 grams is the max amount of sugar that would dissolve at 80 degrees Celsius and that 100 mils of water. So that's the amount that's needed to make a saturated solution. Now, what if we added just 120 grams? Okay, we added 120 grams of sugar at 80 degrees Celsius to the 100 mils of water. Well, in that case, I would have an unsaturated solution. It would all dissolve, but I still would be able to dissolve more. So I would call that unsaturated. It hasn't quite reached yet its saturation point of the max amount of solute that would dissolve at that temperature. 
So saturated solutions, that what the, that's what this curve represents, is how many grams will dissolve at that temperature for 100 mils of water or solvent. Okay, and we already kind of went through that, but as I look at this, this curve represents the amount that I can put in before no more would be able to be dissolved and I would have a saturated solution. So here's another question, and actually we already covered this, so I'm just gonna skip past this. We already did that one. This one we haven't done. Okay, we didn't do 70 degrees Celsius, so try that out. What is the saturation point of the solute at 70 degrees Celsius? And we have to guess a little bit here, but if I go to 70-ish, then I would interpret that right around 122 grams or so. Okay, 122 grams per 100 mils of solvent is what I'd put that at for 70 degrees Celsius. Just over 120. Uh, what temperature is the saturation point of the solute? 160 grams per 100 mils of water. Try that one out. So 160 grams is right here. So that means that for temperature, okay, I'm right about, right about there. So 90 would be at this point. So I would read that as right around uh, 93, 93 or so degrees Celsius would be, I think, the right answer for that given our curve. So we can actually get values for any temperature in this range or any mass that I have of solute within this range, right? Between, let's say, around 72 or so, all the way up to 164-ish. Uh, so I could actually figure out, let's say, uh, I want to dissolve 100 grams of sugar. Well, then I know that I need to get the water to up to at least 42 degrees Celsius or 43 degrees Celsius, somewhere in that range. Okay, so I can get a bunch of data from this curve, which is kind of neat. So here's another question. If a student added 80 grams of solute to 100 mils of water at 20 degrees Celsius, would all of it dissolve? So here's 20, and I'm adding 100. So the answer is no, it wouldn't all dissolve. Uh, in fact, the max that I can actually have dissolve is somewhere around that like 82, 83 grams. Okay, so I would have 17 grams sitting at the bottom of this solution that cannot dissolve at the end of the day. It won't go into solution. So it reaches saturation at 83 grams and I can't get any more to dissolve after that. If a student added 140 grams of solute to 100 grams of water at 90 degrees Celsius, would all of it dissolve? So I'm adding 140 grams at 90 degrees Celsius. So here's 90 right here, okay? And I'm adding 140 grams. So given the fact that this is under the curve, yes, it would all dissolve. Yes! And what would you call the solution? Well, because I'm not yet at the saturation point, I haven't put in the max solute that I can and have it dissolve, I would call this unsaturated. It's not there yet. I could put more in and it would dissolve for me. So that's an unsaturated solution. A term we haven't talked about yet is supersaturated solutions. Now we don't wanna to talk too, too much about this, but they're neat. Uh, in a supersaturated solution, it's a solution that contains more solute that would normally dissolve at a certain temperature. How I make a supersaturated solution is I first heat it up to a higher temperature and dissolve as much as I can, and then I carefully cool it down, making sure I don't get any impurities or anything else in there, and the solute sometimes will stay in solution. So what that means is it won't come out, it won't crystallize, but it stays in solution um, even though it should not be able to have that much dissolved. So for example, let's say I heat it up you know, uh, this sugar water solution to 80 degrees Celsius, and I put in a full 120 grams of sugar into there. So I put 120 grams into 100 mils of water at 80 degrees Celsius, and then I carefully cool it down, okay? And I let it cool down, cool down, cool down to let's say room temperature to 20 degrees Celsius. Well, at this point, I have 120 grams of sugar in 100 mils of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So the amount of solute I have dissolved is way higher than should be able to dissolve at this temperature. But because I heated it up first, dissolved it, and then cooled it down, the sugar will stay in solution sometimes, if I'm very careful. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I touch it or add a dust 
particle or an impurity or anything, right away it's going to all crystallize out and go right down to here. And all of this solute will come out of solution and crystallize and become like a, a solid in there. Okay, which is really neat to see. If you haven't already looked, look at hot ice videos or supersaturated sodium acetate. That's the easiest one to make a supersaturated solution of. So it's all over the interwebs. Uh, and you can take a look at those videos. And I think I've already linked one in a previous uh, video. So I'm not sure if I'll link another one here as well. Okay, so that's how you make a supersaturated solution. Again, is you dissolve the solute at a higher temperature and then you carefully cool it down. Okay, and then that solute will stay in solution and will only crystallize out once it's disrupted or given uh, a dust particle or some kind of impurity and then it will crystallize out. We call the thing that we add a site of nucleation. A site of nucleation is what crystals form around. Um, so if I don't have a site of nucleation, I'm not gonna actually have the crystals being able to come out of solution, okay, even as I lower the temperature. But as soon as I add that thing to have the crystals build around, well, now all of a sudden, boom, I end up having a super saturated solution and it comes out of solution at that time. Okay, some questions where I have a bunch of things. So here I've got sugar, potassium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, and sodium chloride, okay, all plotted on the same curve. And you might be like, hey, that value for sugar doesn't match what we just did. Yeah, because I just kind of said, let's say it's sugar. I have no idea what that was. I have no idea what the solute was. We were just kind of using that as an example for you to think about a specific solute. So now that I take a look at these four different things, okay, and I'm trying to figure out which substance is more soluble at 80 degrees Celsius. So I'd look at 80 and then I'd go and go, oh, here it is right there. There's my um, solubility, my highest thing. So the answer would be for this sugar. For the next one, what substance is saturated at 100 grams per 100 grams of water at 64 degrees Celsius? So which one is hitting 100 grams at 64? So here's 64, right around 70 would be here. Um, ish, right? So 64 would be right around this. So up, uh, broom. So the answer would be potassium nitrate. That would be the thing that is at 100 grams per 100 mils of water at 64 degrees Celsius. You might notice I keep on saying mils while this presentation says grams. Normally that's the unit we use is per 100 mils of water. So I'm just kind of sticking with that. Okay, another example of 59 degrees Celsius, two substances have the same saturation point. What is the saturation point and what are the two substances? Try that out. And the answer is right here. Yeah, I have sodium sulfate and potassium nitrate reaching the same value at that point. Um, so, uh, ammonium sulfate. Oh, as I mess up writing here, ammonium sulfate which we can spell with either an F or a pH. We're gonna use the F, which is the normal spelling here. And then potassium nitrate are the two substances that we're dealing with. And what is the saturation point? Well, given that this is zero, this is 100, um, I, I'd say that's around 90. Let's just go with 90. This is estimating, right? Because we don't have an amazing scale here to use, uh, but that's fine. You know, around 90 grams per 100 mils is what we've got. Okay. Moving on, if I have an unsaturated solution, I already talked about this a bit. Uh, that means it's a solution in which more solute can be dissolved at a given temperature. So as long as I'm under this line, I am at an unsaturated solution. So for example, if I have 100 grams at 60 degrees Celsius, I'm still unsaturated because I could dissolve another 12 or so grams in there. I can dissolve more. So that would be unsaturated at that point. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense of solubility curves and you learned a bit. Uh, any questions, let me know. Have a great day.